How's it going, guys? I am Connor from Running Warehouse, and we're back with episode 11 of the Running Warehouse Connection, our weekly show where we bring the running community together to talk about anything and everything running related. Now, we've been bringing out shoe reviewers left and right, and this week we've got an up-and-comer, and let me just say she's been killing the game. We've got Emily Heller. Emily, thanks for joining us today. All right, I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for uh, having me, and it's nice to virtually meet you, Connor. Good to meet you as well. You know, we've we've been talking about you a lot in the office recently. You know, we saw your videos, uh, I don't know, probably four or five months ago when you were really kind of starting to pop off. And each and every month that goes by, um, I'm more impressed. And I know when we, when we first saw you, we're like, we got to get Emily on board because she knows her shoes. Now, we're going to hop into the shoes shortly. But before we get in on shoes, I want to know, you know, not a lot of people know that much about your background. There's a lot of reviewers out there. We've got any, anywhere from Jamie to Seth. Um, where do you fall in the shoe, review, shoe reviewer game, and how did you get started doing this? So, um, like, unlike Jamie and unlike Seth, I wasn't a runner in high school or college. I kind of got started later in the game um, with triathlon. Uh, a little background story is I decided to sign up for a triathlon with my dad and my best friend, and I was going to do the bike portion, and my friend was going to do the run portion, and we just decided, all right, like, I'll I'll also train for, with you for with the for the run, and um, it's been history ever since. I did a bunch of triathlons, and then I kind of realized I don't really like swimming all that much. <laughs> I did a half Ironman, and I was like, okay, I, I, it kind of put me over the edge a little bit. Um, so I just kind of transitioned exclusively to running. Um, so I'm pretty much a middle of the pack age grouper. And, um, I, I kind of try to speak to that runner in my reviews. Um, you know, the elite runners are great, but maybe we don't have the same kind of, um, style of running. So I try to relate to the people who are maybe placing in their age group or maybe not placing at all. And, kind of just go with the middle of the Packers there. Yeah, and middle of the Packers. So you are out there racing. Are mm -hmm. you doing marathons, half marathons? Where what's, what's your strengths lie in? Yeah, so I've done two marathons. I did New York City in 2015, and I did Philadelphia in 2018. Uh, I'm supposed to do Chicago this year, but I don't know if uh, that's going to happen yet. So um, but, but other than that, locally, I do, you know, just like 5Ks, 10Ks, kind of whatever I can get, uh, I can get signed up uh, in, but I uh, haven't really gone beyond a marathon. It's kind of where I cap it off. <laughs> okay, so maybe an ultra marathon in the distance, but <laughs> for, <Maybe>. now, <laughs> for now, you're sticking with a marathon. And when yeah. you're running marathons, you're running a lot of miles. So I know you've got a full arsenal of shoes. I've seen your bucket. Yeah, your oh, your yeah. bucket's almost <laughs> as, as impressive as my my closet, but yeah. now I got um, a whole shelf too, and they don't even fit on the shelf anymore. It's crazy. Oh, uh, it's crazy! Once you start getting the shoe lineup, yeah. it just never ends. You can never have enough running shoes. Uh -huh. But let, let's dive on into some of your favorites. I know you've been running in a lot, but you know the the more you test, you kind of you have those favorites that you kind of go to day in and day out. So currently, what's your top uh, daily trainer in your lineup? Yeah, so right now my top daily trainer is definitely the ASICS Nova Blast. Um, you know, I, I had really liked ASICS shoes when I first started running, and I kind of not lost interest, but wanted to try other stuff. Um, so I strayed away from them for a little bit, but then I started trying some more when I was reviewing shoes for my channel. And this really was a huge game changer. This is a lot different from what they've been putting out. And the Flight Foam Blast is really, is really good. And I'm, uh, I'm hoping that they put it in more shoes coming up. I know they have it in the Road Blast too, but I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the Nova Blast, I remember when we saw this in a meeting, like probably over a year ago, and ASICS kind of showed it to us and we saw the aesthetic and we're like, wow, this looks like nothing we've seen before. But even when ASICS showed it to us, it seemed like they weren't, they weren't like they didn't even know what they had the special uh, this special shoe that they had in their hands. 
So since I branded it, I kind of have that same feel. It's soft, it's responsive, it's really putting ASICs back on the map. So I'm excited for that and, and what's to come from ASICs. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of great stuff. But that can't be the only shoe you're training in. Is there any other daily trainers that have kind of cycled into your lineup? Yeah, so um, one of the themes I've noticed a lot with running shoes that I've been trying lately is they're all trying, all brands are trying to make more responsive foams, but keep them soft, um, which is why I like this shoe. But uh, the other shoe that I've been running in also for like daily mileage is the Triumph when I want to go maybe a little bit slower, a little bit longer. Um, the Power On Plus midsole that Saucony has been using is really another game changer. It might be, I'm not positive, but a little bit heavier in terms of the foam than the Flight Foam Blast. But um, as far as protection on long runs and just having an enjoyable ride that doesn't feel flat, you know, when you get higher up there, this has been one of my go-tos. Yeah, the, the Triumph, I'm glad you brought that one up because that's also been one of the shoes that I bring out most during my daily training. Yeah. And like, I've, I was always a Triumph fan, but with this one in particular, that Power Run uh, Plus uh, really gives a unique underfoot feel. Like you said, it's a little heavier. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, like I almost feel like the ride trumps that, that slightly heavier feel. So I'm a big fan of that. And I think the next version that's coming out uh, in the next, I think, four or five months um, should take a lot of the learnings from this shoe and further dial it in. So try yeah. out big things. I would love to see this shoe just a little bit lighter. I feel like the upper is a little hot, especially because it's getting warmer out there. And um, I've noticed that my foot feels kind of like an oven on some of those, <laughs> those hotter, longer runs that I've been doing. But, uh, you know, sometimes I would almost choose this shoe over the Nova Blast. It really depends. I mean, this is a little bit more stable for me. I have a little bit of an arch collapse when I run. And the Nova Blast tends to make that a little more... Um, prominent, I guess you could say. This feels, while it's on a stability shoe, a little bit more stable on the ground and I have less of that kind of fall inward in my foot. Yeah, yeah, I, I've also kind of noticed that and I, I usually bring it out on like a long run day when you just want just a little more shoe, something that's gonna get you through mile after mile. And I also agree, even though it is a little heavier, I think what we've seen from Saucony now with their Power Run PB, they are finding ways to make beaded foams lighter. So I think every year that goes by, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Fantastic shoe. And I, I mean, oh. that's, that we can get into that later because that's like, for the last couple of years, Vaporfly has been the talk, but there are more options now for the people. Oh. So so let's, let's move on a little bit lighter shoes. You know, those are your staples. But when you're looking on workout day, when you want something on your daily training that's just a little faster feeling, what shoes are you bringing out? Yeah, so as of right now, I've been still using, this is a kind of an oldie now, but the New Balance Feel So Rebel. This was one of my favorite, well, this was my favorite shoe of 2019. Um, just because I feel like it is light enough to do tempo runs. For me, personally, that's what I use it for. But you can also go longer in this shoe. Uh, it has enough underfoot, for me personally, that I can take it on some double-digit runs. Uh, so I think it's really versatile. I definitely use it more for tempo. But uh, another shoe that I've been using also that is not really any major brand is the Atreyu shoe. Um, I don't know how much, I'm sure you know about Atreyu. They're an Austin-based company uh, and they're kind of taking off this year. I think their shipping starts in July and I got lucky and got to try this shoe a little early and I've been really impressed with it. It's incredibly light. I mean, it barely feels like I'm holding anything and there's plenty cushioning underfoot. I can do tempo runs with this. I can go a little bit longer. It's been a really great workhorse. Yeah, Atreyu is kind of an up and cover company. And, you know, there's big things coming. Uh, everything that I've seen so far, everything I've heard from reviewers, awesome product that delivers in the price point. You know, you, you, can't, get, you can't get much better than the price point. So, <laughs> you know, I, I think we're going to have to wait and see uh, how, how things go in the next couple months. But I, I'm expecting pretty big things from them. Just looking at the shoe, so I actually haven't got a pair on my feet yet. I was going to ask you if you've gotten to try it. Yet. Yeah, I haven't, but looking at it, the aesthetics look fast. It looks mm -hmm. like, what is a shoe that you'd say it compares closest to that's on the market currently? Um, 
Um, I would say probably like the Skechers Razor 3 would be the most similar, uh, just because the uppers are both pretty, I don't have that shoe down here, but the uppers are pretty minimal, uh, lightweight, and the foam feels similar. I would say that the Razor 3 is probably a little bit more responsive, um, but they're both soft, they're both really light, and they're just simple shoes that don't have all these bells and whistles that, you know, this carbon fiber plate, this, you know, you, zoom unit, this air unit in it, it's just a, it's just a slab of foam <laughs> and a simple light upper and it just works. And that's, um, I think probably the most comparable right now. I would say maybe the Rebel is sort of similar, but this is heavier and maybe it has a little more underfoot. It feels like a little bit more substantial than this. Yeah, that, that's good to hear because when we kind of look at a lot of the shoes on the market today, sometimes things just get too complicated and sometimes keeping things as simple as possible, thin, light upper, you know, an, enough midsole to get you through the miles, but like nothing extra. I think that shoe probably can do it all. You know, when I look at the Razor 3, I can do that for daily training, workout day, and even, you know, you might even use it for races uh, if you wanted just a little more underfoot. So. <laughs> versatility seems like th this shoe is going to do it all. Yeah, it's, I'm excited for more people to get it on their foot and just see, or, or their feet and see kind of like what they think of it. But I've really liked it. I've seen a lot of other people who've reviewed it. I know um, Believe in the Run, they reviewed it. Seth uh, reviewed it. Uh, um, I'm not sure who else, but I, I know a couple. Oh, Road Trail Run, they also did it. And everybody seems to like it. I really liked it, so I'm excited to see what you think of it when you get it. <laughs> yeah. Now, when we look at the Olympic trials that just happened uh, this past February, we saw a lot of vapor flies. We saw a couple endorphin pros and, you know, a couple brooks, you know, carbon fiber plate shoes. We also did see one, uh, a Treyu shoe in the mix. So it's, it's good to see that it's up there with, yeah. with the big guns. But That's super cool. yeah, let, let's move on to the super shoes that I was just talking about. I know you've been working out in pretty much all of them. What are your thoughts on these new carbon plated shoes and what are your favorites? Yeah, so um, I love carbon plated shoes, but I don't think that they are necessary all the time. Uh, I know for me, especially because I have that arch collapse, uh, sometimes that it can aggravate that a little bit. Um, but my favorite one right now is definitely the Endorphin Pro. Uh, for me, it's a little bit of a better fit for my running stride than the next percent. I love the next percent, don't get me wrong. And I've never raced in this because of COVID. Um, but just, it's a little bit more traditional of an upper, of a feel to a, like a regular running shoe than the next percent. And it's a little more stable, which I've also really appreciated because the next percent is a little bit uh, unstable and iffy for me around turns and when my stride starts to get sloppy. Yeah, I, I also kind of, I fall into that. I, I've loved the Vaporfly 4% and then when the next percent came out, that was my favorite shoe. And I mm -hmm. think a lot of people get in their heads that Nike is the best and Nike is making great product, but a lot of these other companies are catching up. And when I first put the Endorphin Pro on my feet, it was the first time where I said, wow, these companies are, you know, Saucony is doing just as good a product. And like, I think it is like what you said, it's going to come down to the individual person. Not every shoe is going to work as well from run, run, from one runner to the next. And when we look at these shoes, the carbon fiber plate, the midsole is a big part of the shoe, but the geometry is a big part of the shoe. So someone like you who maybe has a different gait than me, shoes are going to react differently. So I think trying the shoes and figuring out which works best for you is going to be, you know, the best way to, to find out what, yeah. which is the best super shoe for you. You know, I actually tried, I ran uh, five and a half miles on uh, Tuesday in the Endorphin Pro. And then I ran uh, five and a half yesterday in the next percent, just to kind of see, give them both a feel back to back and see what I liked better. Um, and my legs were probably more tired yesterday than they were the day before, but uh, I wore the next percent and I felt almost like it's too soft, actually. Like, I, don't get me wrong, I love the shoe. I am not a next percent hater by any means, but um, wearing them back to back, I actually kind of like that this is a little bit more firm. It feels slightly more efficient for me um 
Whereas with the next person, I felt like I was working a little bit more to kind of go forward in my stride. My turnover was a little bit slower and I was like 10 seconds slower wearing the next percent. Not that that really makes a huge difference, but I guess uh, in a marathon it would. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I do love the next percent. It's right here. Um, but this is just maybe a better fit for me. And that's actually my video this week is which one would I buy. So, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think maybe this would be the better choice. All right. Well, we see the Vaporfly, the Endorphin Pro on all the top pro athletes. Do you think that these shoes serve a purpose for runners of all levels? You know, we see it on two hour marathoners. You see it on three hour marathoners. We see it even on four hour marathoners. Do you think that there is a certain runner that isn't gonna get a benefit from this? Or if you're looking for a performance benefit, you should give the Vaporfly a shot? I think I, I'm, I have, feel pretty strongly about this that any runner can wear really any shoe. I mean, um, I think a middle of the pack person, I'm a middle of the pack person. I'm not running a three hour marathon. I got news for you. <laughs> I'm not as fast as Seth. I'm not as fast as Thomas. I'm not as fast as those guys. Um, and I, think that I would really benefit from wearing an X percent in a marathon. And I think anybody who might be a little bit slower than me would benefit. I mean, the idea of these carbon fiber plated shoes is to give you a more efficient stride and a quicker turnover and give you, basically it's to give you a more efficient stride so that your time ends up being a little bit faster because your stride is less sloppy. I, that's how I perceive it. And I think who can't benefit from that? I think anybody really could. It's just a matter of which one works best for you. Um, so yeah, I think anybody can wear it. I think it's when I see in these forums that, oh, well, this person's too slow to wear this shoe. You know, I think that's so elitist and not true at all, really. It, it, they're for everybody. Yeah, I'd agree. And when we look at the past, racing shoes, even five, six years ago, you can make a point that a lot of these super lightweight, thin, low to the ground elite racers weren't for everyone. You know, a four hour marathoner would probably be suffering 10 miles in from some of these shoes. I would be suffering. <laughs> yeah. But we've, we've made a point now in running shoes where these highly cushioned shoes really can be used by anyone. It's highly cushioned. It's efficient. Uh, I'd agree. Like it, it seems like we've gotten to a point in running shoe tech where pretty much these shoes can give anyone a benefit as long as you're looking for something light and fast. So yeah, it's just to give you a little bit of a boost, whether you're a, a, an 11 minute miler or a five minute miler, I feel like it really, it can help either way. Yeah. Now, are there any other carbon fiber plate shoes you've used? Have you gotten a fuel cell TC on your feet yeah, yet? I have that right here. Um, I really love this shoe. Don't get me wrong. And when I tried this first, before I tried the Endorphin Pro, um, I was like, okay, now this is a competitor to the next percent. Now I know this is a little bit heavier and some people say that you, that this isn't really a marathon racer and maybe like the RC, which I haven't tried yet or even seen yet really, uh, maybe the RC would be a better fit for a marathon. Um, but I really like this shoe. It's a little bit heavier. And for me, the problem really is this uh, flare out here um, because like I've said, but like I was saying before, my foot already goes this way. So in this type of shoe with this flare out here, I feel like it pushes it even more so inward. Um, so it's not really the best option for me for probably like a longer distance, like marathon type of race, but um, it is a great shoe. And the fuel cell foam on this feels super soft. It's gotta be different than like the Rebels fuel cell foam, I think. <laughs> Yeah, we, we talked with Danny Orr from New Balance recently, and that was the main question I had was this fuel cell between shoes, it really does feel different. And, and he confirmed that fuel cell, while it, they all have the same name, durometers um, and just small tweaks can make a huge difference in how mm -hmm. the foams feel. So what we see in the TC is going to be kind of one of the softest and most springy feel. And then I've I've heard that the RC Elite, which I, I have an early prototype of, is even lighter and uh, more springy. So it, it's crazy, crazy what little tweaks can do in, in these compounds. And it also just shows what, what can come down the road from some of these companies. So yeah. it's exciting. 
I do. Yeah, it is exciting. And I do really like the way this feels. It might be a little bit soft for some people. I would argue maybe it might be a little bit even softer than the next percent. Um, so if I'm comparing like the Endorphin Pro to this, I'd probably pick this because it's a little bit more efficient, a little bit firmer. Um, but this is a great shoe. And I do think it's a competitor uh, for the next percent. I do think it can compete, even though it might be a little bit heavier. Yeah, I we're talking about maybe two ounces and yeah. at the end of the day, like, sure. If, if you're talking a two hour marathon, every ounce does matter. But for most yeah. people, uh, I, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. And you get the bonus of added durability from the extra rubber. So yeah, that's great too. Big bonus. Yeah. Now we've talked about now kind of some of the big carbon plated shoes, but I wanted to get into, I saw you've been running in a lot of Skechers shoes right now. Mm -hmm. Skechers is really on the up and coming right in the last real, I mean, we've seen it over the last couple of years, but in the past year, we've seen a lot of fire from uh, the brand's lineup. Are there any uh, shoes from Skechers right now that you're really liking? Well, I really like the Razor 3. That's one. I don't have it down here, but I love the Razor 3. Um, I really like the Go Run 7 Plus. I have to get more miles in that. Uh, but I was impressed with that shoe and it wasn't something that I was super excited to try. Uh, but when I did try it, I was like, oh, wow, this is a good shoe. Um, I was a really huge fan of the Go Run Ride 7. Um, that was one of my favorite shoes before I even started my channel. It was my, one of my top uh, daily trainers. And then the Go Run Ride 8 was a little bit different for me. The Hyperverse felt like maybe a little more firm and the Goodyear rubber with that maybe was a little firm for me. But um, I think out of the sketches that I've tried so far, I would say this, the Razor 3 is by far my favorite and the 7 Plus is a close second. And I'm getting the Speed Elite yeah. delivered to me maybe like next week, which is really exciting. <laughs> that is exciting. I, if you liked the Razor, I think you're gonna love the Speed Elite. Yeah. Little faster feeling. O overall, that, that shoe has been one that's kind of been in my workout lineup week in and week out. It's, it's just a, it's a, it's a really fast feeling shoe, very efficient. And I like uh, that you uh, talked about the Go Run 7 plus because mm -hmm. that is a shoe that I think maybe not everyone has given the time of day just because the go run seven came out not too long ago and it was a great shoe but it didn't get a lot of attention because the upper was really sloppy yeah. it had a it, no support people were falling out of it and I think it got a bad reputation the seven plus fixes that we get uh, really? a much more supportive upper and it's almost a new shoe even though it's all it is is an upper change. So yeah, I've also the upper found was perfect for me. I had no problems with it. I was held in just fine. No heel slipping, which I have a problem with in a lot of different shoes. It's a really good shoe. I feel like it's like a sleeper hit. Yeah. Well, I also saw that you've been running in the Peg 37. And yeah. for anyone who knows the Pegasus, it's been one of our most popular and uh, you know, best performing daily trainers for years. What were your thoughts on Peg 37? And I don't know, have you used the Pegasus in previous versions? How, how did it differ? Yeah, so the last time I wore a Pegasus was the 33. So I've been kind of out of the Pegasus game for a little bit. <laughs> um, but if I'm gonna compare the two of those shoes, uh, the 37 is much softer. Uh, and I think it's a lot to do with getting rid of Kushlon and using React Foam, of course. Uh, but what I really like about the 37 is that it's soft, but it also does still maintain that response that I did feel in the, in the 33 that I, that I wore years ago. Um, and I think it's also pretty cool that Nike kind of catered to men and women differently for that shoe. The women get, um, what is it, like 15 PSI in their Zoom unit and the men get 20 or something like that. I'm not positive on that. but. Yeah. But we get a softer ride, which they say we asked for, which is cool. Um, and men get a slightly firmer ride, uh, which I like a little bit of a softer feel in my shoes. So I was pleasantly surprised that they listened to the customer and we got a little bit of a softer shoe. But I've been really liking it. I've been using it in all different kinds of runs, trying to pick up the pace a little bit in it, take it on longer and slower runs. And it's held up pretty well. I am... I'm liking it. I like the the outsole is also pretty good, better than the previous version that I tried. Yeah. 
Yeah, I haven't gotten my own pair of pegs yet, but oh, really? I have high hopes. They they look fast, but you know, of course, they're going to be that that staple daily trainer. Um, so yeah. I'm excited for that. But one shoe that I don't think I'm going to be getting that I know you reviewed was the Kayano, and you know, oh, for yeah. for years that's been like the tried and true stability shoe. I I don't over pronate, so it's never really been on my radar. And I know you also don't typically use stability shoes. What were your thoughts on that? And how, how do you think stability shoes like the Kayano could work for someone who maybe doesn't need, you know, max stability? Yeah. So one of the main things or comments that I get on my channel um, is that like, wow, your arch collapse is so bad. And, <laughs> and you know, like, oh, you need a stability shoe and you know, all this stuff. So I've never worn a stability shoe until the Kayano. I've never had a problem. I, my, I don't have any injuries from it. I, it doesn't hurt me at all, just so we can set the record straight there. But um, I tried the Kayano and I was kind of not really, I wasn't very excited to try it. But when I did put it on, I was really impressed because I felt like the forefoot had some flexibility there and it had some cushioning and it kind of was um, a little bit different than what I thought like a typical stability shoe is. Uh, my idea of a stability shoe is, you know, a firm kind of heavy shoe that's gonna, you know, break my knees at some point because it's forcing my foot to go all these different directions. And while I did experience some knee pain, um, it was really nice that it was, it had a good amount of cushioning and, the stability elements didn't feel like they were forcing me. It kind of felt like it was going with my stride and I didn't really have to pay too much attention to it. Wow. It's, uh, yeah, you know, I, I've always thought about, should I, should I give the Kayano a shot? And as I've kind of seen it progress, there were a couple years where the Kayano, I, I'd heard some negative uh, feedback about it, but really the whole ASICS line has stepped up in the past year. So it is a shoe that will be on the radar at least uh, at least to uh, give it a shot, see what it feels like. So yeah, um, that's good. yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot coming from ASICS and um, ASICS has been bringing heat lately. <sighs> they really have changed it up. I'm impressed. I don't know. Like every ASICS shoe that I've tried pretty much I've really liked the Evo ride was a little firm for me, but, um, but the glide ride was one of the first ones that I tried that was really good. Uh, the Cumulus 22 was, uh, yeah, the Cumulus 22 was good. Uh, the Nimbus 22 was fine. And the Nimbus Light is also a great shoe. Yeah. The Nimbus Light, actually, I, I used that a bit and it almost, I almost liked it more than the, the traditional Nimbus. Oh yeah. I like I, it really I, more. Yeah. I, I think that is going to be something that you know, I wouldn't even be surprised if the light took over the Nimbus series because it's such a great shoe. But there, you know, I, I try most of the shoes out there, but there are a couple shoes right now that I'm kind of looking down the pipeline that I'm really excited for. Are there any shoes you haven't tried yet that you really want to get on your feet? Yes, um, a couple of them. So the Hoka Clifton Edge is one that I've been really excited about. I've been watching uh, some reviews. I actually just watched uh, Thomas's review. Uh, he just posted it maybe like a couple hours ago, yeah. but I'm really excited for that. Um, and then I'm also really excited for the Endorphin Speed. Uh, that's, a, that's one that I'm really, the whole Endorphin line I've been excited about for a while now, um, but the shift in the speed, I'm pumped to get my feet in those eventually. Um, what else is there coming out? Oh, the, uh, the, the Razor 3 Plus, or if there's gonna, there's like, yep. I think that's what it's called, right? I'm yep. excited for that. Just because um, I love the Razor 3, as I said before, but there's a couple of things about it that I'd like change, and I'm interested to see if they do change in the, uh, in the updated version, so. Yeah, and you know, the Razor 3 Plus, we got a small sneak preview uh, back in December. They're taking very, very, you know, the Razor is a, a, a popular and you know it, it's been everyone's favorite shoe they're going to take small little changes in the upper that they've heard uh, now it obviously is a lot cleaner look so I think if you were a fan of the razor but you just you know you had a couple small issues with fit um, you know I think the razor three plus is going to be a great option um, you also brought up the feet on the side 
no more speed, no okay. more speed. <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> yeah, no. So I, I mean, as much as I, I think there was a polarizing opinion, some people loved the speed, some people hated it. Um, whether you, you were on one side or the other, I think the new plus has a really clean look. So I don't think you're going to be able to complain. Yeah. Um, you also brought up the endorphin speed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is, I think you're going to like that shoe, especially since you like the Endorphin Pro, because uh, again, it's slightly more training oriented, but still fast. It's got a slightly different plate. It's got a TPU plate, a um, little bit more stable of an upper. Um, do you have one of those shoes coming your way? Do you need one of those shoes? I need one of those shoes. I, I need one of the this, those shoes. Yes, I don't have any of them coming my way. <laughs> okay. Okay. Actually, actually, that's not true. I have the Clif the Clifton Edge is coming my way, but the and no, none of the endorphins are coming my way as far as I know. Yeah. But uh, I'm uh, I'm hoping that I'll I'll get my hands on them eventually. You know? Yeah. We'll, we'll see what we can do. I know. So the endorphin speed we're looking at the last I've heard is like around July release. Wow. Um, and then of course the edge is coming soon and I actually just got my pair haven't got too much miles on them yet but pretty pretty high hopes for those as well yeah I think mine literally were just delivered like 10 minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to try them out like I, I, the the 10.9 was a little bit ridiculous looking to me I don't even really do trail I don't trail run at all so I can't say that I would even use it but um, the fact that they're kind of using a little bit of a less intense version for a road running shoe is interesting. They, they kind of push the, the envelope a little bit, Hoka, and I, I like that about them. Yeah, and I think when the 10.9 did come out, we saw, you know, some people thought it was really cool, but we saw a lot of people saying, this is ridiculous. And like, at the end of the day, they're making shoes for uh, specific purposes. And then with the 10.9 in particular, you see a lot of that technology trickling into performance products like the Clifton Edge. So it's cool to take a big kind of crazy philosophy and then use parts of it to make, you know, their daily trainers or, you know, their more mainstream shoes, you know, better performance. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then another shoe. So I know you're a big uh, Nike Vaporfly fan. Mm -hmm. Of course we have the Alpha Fly coming out. Yeah. <laughs> now, not a lot of information is out. We saw it on athletes at the Olympic trials. We've seen like a couple pairs, you know, coming onto the market here and there. Um, but we haven't heard of an official release date. And as of today, I do know that we've had it confirmed that they will be coming in very shortly. We don't have, we don't have any uh, official dates yet, but they should be coming in very shortly. Is that a shoe you're excited for? So I'm excited to try it, yes, but I have to wonder if it would be like a little too much for me. <laughs> um, it seems like the, the Zoom X and the carbon plate and the Zoom unit, it seems like it's a lot at once. And I have to wonder if my ankle would just break in half wearing that shoe. I can't, <laughs> I can't imagine that. It's incredibly stable, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's definitely an interesting shoe that I feel like I have to try just to like, you know, give it a shot for the channel and how can I review shoes and not try it, you know, but um, yeah, it's definitely one that I'm interested in. I think it's kind of like off the hook though, totally like out there and crazy. Definitely not something that anybody else is doing, that's for sure. Right. And when we look at the Vaporfly, like it has an extremely high level of cushioning mm -hmm. and I know you you were just worried maybe is this shoe going to be stable enough? Cause I know the vapor fly you'd, you'd said you, you felt it was a little unstable. I think, and this is just speculation, but I think you might like the alpha fly because from what I can tell the base of the shoe is a little wider. So right. even though it does have a higher stack height, I, I have, I have a feeling that it might be a little more stable feeling just because of how wide the base is. We're going to have to wait and see, get it on our feet. I think people are going to kind of go back and forth. The Vaporfly next percent will live in line with the Alpha Fly. They're both going to be on the market together. And I think people are going to continue to go for both because Alpha Fly um, is kind of that peak top of the level performance, but it's more efficient from what I've heard, but it's heavier. It's a little higher. Vaporfly from what I've heard is going to feel a little faster when you, you're picking up the pace at a slightly higher speed. So I think people are going to go back and forth and I, I'm interested to hear what your opinions are and uh, how they compare once you get your own pair. 
Yeah, I'm de I would definitely do like a comparison video there. I think really what's going to, like you said, it's just going to be on personal preference. Do you want a shoe that's a little bit lower to the ground? Um, I mean, the next percent already has pretty high stack height. So are you looking to go even higher <laughs> and have like a, it must be like a pogo stick feel or something like that. I think I saw Jeff Dengate from uh, Runner's World. He said that he tried his yesterday or something and they were like pogo sticks. So it must be, it must be an incredibly bouncy feel. Uh, have you tried one before? I've tried the Alpha Fly. I, I had one shoe. They, they brought one into a meeting. So I got it on my foot. I ran down the hall. Uh -huh. um, and that's exactly what I, you know, it's super springy, very yeah. efficient, but you do feel it's a lot of shoes. So I, you know, I, I really have to get uh, a pair and test them both side by side, but yeah. I think it will fall, find itself into my lineup. Yeah, I know I'll try it. I know <laughs> I'm going to have to bite the bullet and give it a shot, uh, but I'm very interested to see how it feels. Yeah. And I know we had a, uh, a, a workout recently where you tried all three uh, carbon plated shoes at once. Um, mm -hmm. Is that something, are you bringing these carbon plated shoes out for workouts normally, or is that kind of a special occasion slash race day? What are you using these shoes for uh, on a normal basis? Yeah, well, right now, since there's really not much racing going on, I am kind of just bringing them out for workouts and testing them out in that way. Uh, that was just, that video was just kind of like a thing that I decided, oh, I'm going to try this today. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been using my carbon fiber plated shoes mostly for just days that I want to like, like keep a certain pace uh, and uh, not run out of gas as quickly as I would maybe in like a traditional daily trainer. Um, so I've been running a lot in the endorphin pro for like some eight mile tempo paced runs. Um, I've been doing a little bit of interval work, not a ton, but that day specifically, I wanted to do uh, like mile repeats. So I wanted to see kind of like how each of those shoes would feel, um, you know, just doing doing one of those mile workouts. Um, I don't love the Carbon X. I know the Carbon X was in that video. It's not my favorite shoe. I kind of feel like it puts, it almost puts the brakes on me a little bit. Um, but uh people were saying that I should do that video, but it reverse. Yeah. So wear the next percent first and then wear the TC, I guess, and then wear the Carbon X last and see kind of like how it holds up. But that's mostly what I've been using them for is just here and there some interval work and doing some like longer runs where I don't want to um, see too many positive splits. <laughs> yeah. I think that's interesting that you did that because I think with these carbon plate shoes, um, they all have their own unique feel, but it, it's funny how from one workout day to another wearing different shoes, sometimes you just feel a lot better, uh, you know, one, one Monday versus the next Friday on workout days. And uh, it's kind of cool to do it all in one day. So, you know, I, I've had days where I've went out and killed a workout earlier in the week and then you come back later and you're a little tired. So yeah, it's interesting <laughs> to see. times like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then also Carbon X. I, you said you're you're not yeah. the biggest fan, and I am kind of in the same boat where it wasn't my favorite. It, I felt like it was a solid shoe, but mm. felt a little little heavy, a little bulky. And I, if anything, I was using it more for daily training rather than faster days. And I think that just kind of comes down to that the weight of the shoe. Um, I've seen prototypes of the next version. Hoka is doing great things with carbon fiber plates. And I think we're going to start seeing, you know, more niche silos and uh, I'm excited for where the carbon X is going. So I'll, I'll just leave it there that I wouldn't count out the carbon X just yet. Um, no, I mean, like that's probably the most stable of yeah. the carbon shoes. So, I mean, in that respect, it's a great shoe <laughs> and it's probably perfect for me, but just the, midsole feel mixed with the carbon plate. I don't know. For some reason, I feel like my legs just are exhausted in that shoe. I don't know what really what it is, but the Rocket X, yep. I think that's what it's called, right? Yep. That shoe is pretty intriguing to me, and I'd like to try that eventually. Yeah, yeah. That shoe, from what we've heard, is going to be coming in around November. So, um, awesome. yeah, from what I've heard from Olympic trials athletes, uh, very, very good shoe. Yeah. huge upgrade over the the carbon the carbon rocket um yeah so yeah uh lots of great things from hoke and i i think 
Hoka, the one thing that they, they're not afraid to do crazy things. I would love to keep seeing them testing and improving their midsole compounds. Cause I think that's the one thing they're slightly behind in, but uh, yeah. I, I have no doubts that they're going to, they're going to continue to just nail these, these niche, super fast race products. Yeah. Well, when I started running, um, well, really it, being interested in running shoes in 2014, um, the shoe that started it all for me was the, was the original Clifton. Yeah, yeah. It was unlike anything on the market and that totally like intrigued me and it made me want to look at all these different kinds of running shoes and that really hit the gas in terms of me being interested in running shoes but you know they were the most innovative there for a while and kind of like brought Max Cush shoes to the forefront and then everybody wanted to have a Max Cushion shoe. They kind of started a trend. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Max Cushion now, like at, at first, very few companies have it. And now it seems like every company has mm -hmm. their own Max Cushion shoe. I, you know, I, I don't think we really delve too deep into this, into this topic, but are there any other Max Cushion shoes uh, that you're really liking? Uh, is Hoka your favorite or do you, what would you say is your top, you know, high stack height shoe? Hmm. Oh boy. Um, I would say that my favorite is probably Hoka, although I haven't really tried too many recently. Um, the, this is definitely like my favorite shoe of all time. It's, just, <laughs> it's like nostalgia. I love it so much. Um, now, is that is that the original? The re-release. The re-release. Okay. I have I have an original, but I was too lazy to grab it, so <laughs> this is good enough. Um, but yeah, I would say that if you're looking for a Max Cushion shoe, Hoka does it best. Uh, Cause they were just the originals. They were the kind of like the pioneers of that to me anyway. Um, yeah. But as far as right now, I don't know if I'm really running in a ton of Max Cushion shoes. I mean, I would consider the Triumph kind of like Max Cushion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ish. Yeah. It's sort of like between Daily Trainer and Max Cushion shoe. I'm trying to think if there's any others that I've really tried recently. Hey, have um, you gotten the the Max Road on your feet yet from Skechers? Have, yeah. So I tried that on at a marathon expo in November and I really didn't like the way the upper felt so I didn't go for it. I did almost consider buying it and trying to review it but I didn't love the upper so hopefully in the next couple versions or the next version they'll kind of tweak that a little bit. Do you know if they're going to be doing that? <laughs> yeah you know that the so the Max Road is my favorite shoe and I you know I wasn't like a huge fan of the upper but it didn't bother me but a lot of the people that I know who've gotten the shoe, that was, they, they couldn't get it to work for them because of that upper. Skechers is, is on it. You know, they, they, they take people's feedback seriously. This yeah. next version, that upper, you're going to get everything you loved from the Max Road, but that upper has been refined. They're, they're going more to an engineered mesh. And uh, yeah, I, I think that that was kind of a big, um, a big issue with, with this last version, but you know, big, big things to come from them. And, you know, uh, we're just gonna have to wait and see. I, I can't get too much into Skechers coming out, but <laughs> they've got just so much great stuff. And I think yeah. that's going to be a brand that, that uh, you and, you know, everyone out there are going to want to keep on their, uh, oh, yeah. their I, tabs. I'm excited to keep trying shoes from them. I, um, I think a lot of people are over the stigma that they're kind of like the, the shoes that are, uh, I don't know, not for running, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, any shoe that I've tried from them, I've been really pretty much impressed with. And I think really like they, they like you said, they listened to their customers. There was an issue with the Go Run 7 Upper and they fixed it in the Go Run 7 Plus. And in the Razor 3, they're gonna fix the issues that people had with that and for the 3 Plus, is that what it's gonna be called? The 3 Plus? Uh... Yeah, you know, I, okay. I, I think so, you know, <laughs> I, don't, like I don't know. That. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's great that they that they listen to their customers. And I think that they are definitely not just up and coming, but uh, a brand that people should be following. Yeah. Yeah, I've said it, you know, 10 times already, but between, you know, Skechers, Saucony, Nike, Hoka, Asics, all the top brands are bringing the fire in this next year. And there, there's a few brands that are kind of going to be left behind, but right now is just such a good time to be a runner. And but between every single brand, there's just such amazing offerings. It's hard to it's hard to keep up with it all because there's many, so many, many good shoes. shoes. <laughs> it's too many good shoes. So you know, pe people 
people will just have to, you know, come to your channel and, uh, and, and get the facts because it's, it's too hard to keep up with everything. But That's right. I'll try uh, them all for everybody. <laughs> perfect. Well, super excited. And, and thank you again for talking shoes. I know people wanted to hear that. I, I sent out fan questions and like 90% of them were, were shoe questions. I know you <laughs> answered a lot of them, but yeah. I, I got, I got a few more fan questions for you. So we're going to, we're going to cycle into the fan questions. Right. So number one is, and I, and I think I, I might know this one, but I'd like for you to, you know, set the record straight. Where did the name for your YouTube channel come from? Um, well, my name is Emily Heller. <laughs> so um, I just did a play on words there and I just was like, all right, how can I put hell or like hell, <laughs> hell and Heller into a running, sh a running channel name. So I was like, okay, well, run like Heller. I don't know. That's kind of just how it came about. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure if there was like a crazy story, but, um, no, no that, a crazy that's story. pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, that's, that's fun to hear how it all started. Yeah. Number two, um, if you had one shoe that you'd have to run in for the rest of your life, so just one, what would it be? Hmm. One shoe for the rest of my life. What would it be? I'm going to have to say this shoe, the, uh, the Hoka Clifton. I, th I think the OG, maybe not even the re-release, just like the OG. Yeah. It, the re-release was great, but it just didn't feel the same as the, as the original did. And maybe that's just because it's been years <laughs> and technology has changed so much, but I think it really would be this shoe. Um, just because, I ran a marathon in this shoe and it was great for that. And it's light enough that you can take it on some tempo runs and it's really versatile and um, the durability isn't terrible on it. So I think this would be it. Hoka, Clifton OG or the re-release, whichever one. Yeah, that's great shoe. I, I'd have that one up there as well because it, it is yeah. so light, cushioned and versatile. Mm -hmm. um, the final question, you are a shoe reviewer. So let's, let's put it back. I'm going to put it back to you. What reviewers do you look up to? Okay, so there's a lot of them, and I hope I don't <laughs> forget anybody, but I will say that when I, before I even started my channel, I reached out to Jameson Michael, and I said, like, hey, like, how do I start this up? What do I have to do? What's some advice? And he couldn't have been nicer. He gave me so much feedback. And I love his channel. I've been watching him, him and Ginger Runner, I've been watching for the longest time. So um, you got to give it to Jamie, uh, Kofuzi, Ginger Runner, Seth, Believe in the Run, Ed Budd. There's so many. I don't want to, I don't want to forget anybody, but I think those are my top, my top choices right now. Um, I watch a lot of other running shoe reviewers. <laughs> so, so I think those are the main guys. Yeah, you nailed them. Those are those yeah. are our favorites in house yeah. as well. Jamie has a has a close spot in my heart. We we usually see him once or twice a year, and yeah, he's a good he's guy. the man. So, well, great. I mean, it, it was awesome to hear you know where you started, your favorite shoes, get a little bit more background on you. I've been seeing you over the last couple months, and you know every month I check back, it just seems like your videos are growing in uh, quality and in viewers. So I'm excited for what's to come. Thank you. I'm trying, you know, just trying to do the daily grind, working, shooting YouTube videos. It's kind of being a dog mom. It's kind of what it's all about here. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That, that sounds like a busy, a busy schedule, but you're getting it done for people who, you know, they, maybe they know you or, you know, they just want to keep on track and follow you. Where can they find you on social media? Yeah. So my Instagram is just run like Heller. Um, Obviously, YouTube is run like Heller. And my Strava is Emily underscore Heller. I also have a Twitter, which is Emily A. Heller, which I use kind of like for work. But I do post some running stuff there sometimes too. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much where I am on social media. Perfect. Well, uh, looking forward to uh, seeing what's to come in the future. And, you know, I, I think a main goal of ours is once things to get better, reaching out with, you know, our favorite reviewers, Jamie, you, and getting you out here and, and doing some content in person. That, that, I'd love that's to do that. Hours. Yes. Once this is all over, I'll be on the next plane. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. We're looking forward to it. You know, again, great to hear from you. Great to 
meet you virtually. And, uh, you know, until next time, uh, that was the Running Warehouse Connection. <laughs>